Good afternoon, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. And welcome to our midday meditation. Today we're in Luke 16, 1 and 2, Tyler. He also said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and an accusation was brought to him that his man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. All right. So this parable all right, comes on the heels of of Jesus warning them about covetousness. Um, you've got uh, uh, and and uh, management of resources because you go back to Luke chapter fifteen, verse one. It says, "Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him." And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. He said, What does that have to do with covetousness? Almost everything that the Pharisees were ever upset about was based on covetousness. About the perception of the loss of something or the inability to gain something else. And uh, they were afraid, well, well, if you let all these low-quality people in, hmm, and so Jesus here, as he's continuing this, I want you to look at it in a different light. He's looking at the, this parable that he's built on those three previous parables. A hundred sheep, ten coins, two brothers. Right? Now he's saying... We've got a manager. He hasn't done a good job managing. He knows he's about to be in trouble with the master. And so now the accounts he hasn't been handling, what's he essentially do, Tyler? There's a way to get them actually handled. He cuts off a little bit of the price that way. They actually get some, or the majority of the money instead of not getting any money at all. All right. Now, think about this in regard to souls. Think about in regard to souls, because if you think about in regard to souls, what Jesus says here makes a lot more sense than the normal way people try and explain it. So the tax collectors, the prostitutes, the you pick it. Everything that upset the Pharisees, right? Because they weren't holy. So they just left all that stuff unmanaged and Jesus is saying to them hey you're going to give an account for not managing this part of the master's resources because I know this the manager had to have been managing enough of the resources that the master didn't notice that there was a problem but these other areas someone hey he's not handling all of your business so the manager hmm what Jesus is trying to get the Pharisees to see is, look, it's better to get something and get back on track. Yeah, you've lost the window on some of this stuff, but if you guys will get back on track with this, you got to be smarter. You Pharisees, you have to be smarter. And we've dealt with this before in classes. A hundred percent of nothing is still nothing. Nothing. 50% of 100 is 50. Now, some of you, you're looking at it going, but I'm still missing the other 50. Okay, let me, let me, let me make sure we understand this. I use four pennies here. Tyler owes me four pennies. He's paid me none of them. And I look at him and I say, until I get all four pennies, I'm not taking anything from you. So he shrugs and he's like, whatever. Who has all four pennies now? I do. Who has nothing? You. But I go to Tyler and I go, you know what? You know, I've had this issue between us for the last minute, for the last 60 seconds. You know what, dude? I get it. You aren't giving up the four pennies. That's an issue between you and God over your own integrity. 
if, if I'll split the difference with you at two pennies, are we, will you be fine to pay two pennies and then I can clear my books? I think that'll work for me. All right, give me the two pennies. Thank you. I write it off on the books. You say you lost half of it. I didn't lose any of it. If he was never going to pay me, here's what I was going to have. Say it a little bit louder, Tyler. Nothing. Nothing. And that's Jesus' point. If I can get 50%, or if I can get 75%, and get back on track with what... And the church needs to get this through their head. But, but churches are so busy trying to go, well, you know, we need to market towards this as segment of our demographic. You understand that's Jesus's point. This this modern church, you realize most everything in the modern American church is anathema to what Jesus actually said and did. You got white churches that don't want to evangelize black churches. You got black churches that don't want white people coming. You got Korean churches that they're glad the blacks and the whites don't want anything to do with them at all. And everybody is spending money trying to market to a specific demographic because, well, if we can get those people, everything will be fine in our church. And Jesus is saying, you're leaving all this money on the table. Go get as much of it as you can and get back on track. Because two of four is better than none of four if I'm going to stick to the old way. But if I'm going to learn the lesson from Jesus, and someone, well, what's your marketing idea, Brother Brian? Sow the word everywhere to anybody at any time. Don't really care about demographics. Don't be nicer to rich people than poor people. Don't give more pity to poor people than rich people. Treat everyone like they're equally damned and in need of a savior and extend the offer to everyone regardless. He said, but what if you don't get in rich people in your church? You, you don't get it. One sows, another waters, but what? God gives the increase. God gives the increase. He didn't tell me to go around and figure out which seed was going to take root and bear 30, 60, and 100 fold. He just told me to go sow. He told Tyler to go sow. He also told us to go water. It's up to him. But I know this. If these are seeds, let me carry this analogy through. And I say, I'm not going to plant any of the seeds until I find the perfect soil. And I've got this catalog in my head of what will be the best candidate to be a Christian. Now listen to how arrogant that is. But most of your church, uh, church growth stuff has a principle in it that you should focus on your best audience your best soil. So I'm not going to plant any seeds until I find the right kind of soil. Tyler should have let that one fall for one reason. It goes where it goes. It goes where it goes. And all four of them may bear and only one of them might bear, but the one that bears might be the one that bears 30, 60, and 100 fold. But I can waste a lot of time trying to find the perfect soil to plant four seeds, or I can just sow 400 seeds and let God worry about it. Same principle. Anything you want to add on this one? No, sir. All right. I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. And we bid you good afternoon.